the closer you are to the UV light inside your reptiles enclosure, the more intense the UV rays are, to the point where it could be too much for that specific animal. The same as if you've got a 12% UV strip light or a Ferguson Zone 3 strip light and you're right next to it, it's going to be a lot more than Ferguson Zone 3, but the same again, if you're three feet away from it, it's only going to be Ferguson Zone 1. Is that the same in nature? Does it get more intense the closer to the sun we actually go? Well, today I'm going to climb a mountain to find out. We're going to be checking the UVI at the bottom of the mountain and then again at the top of the mountain just to see if there's a difference. We're going to be doing some more tests along the way, so I hope you enjoy. But as with all Northern Exotics adventures, we're not actually going to be doing this by halves. We're going to climb up uh, England's highest mountain. We're going up to the Lake District, Scarfowl Pike. Let's have a play. You know, uh, that one, the one that's in the clouds. That's where we're going. Whew, there we go. There's the one up in the clouds just there. Gotta go up around that one. But solar meter, 6.5. There's the sensor at the bottom of that big ass mountain just there. Uh, 2.4, 2.5. I wonder if it's gonna be the same at the top. We've got some other bits and pieces to do, just like similar to this. I've got the roof of the car. See it? So on the top, we have got 2.5. Now, if we turn it upside down, is it going to get the UV reflection off the surface of the car? Let's have a look. Oh, God, look at that. Look at that. 0 0.2. So, we've got nothing. I wonder if it's the same on the grass. Nothing. In the shade of the ferns. 0 0.3. 0, 0. Back out. Oof, off the rocks. There we go. Water is supposed to intensify the sun, isn't it? That's how you get sunburned. Shall we try it out? A little waterfall just here. Uh, we've got the solar meter just here. We'll try and find a way. You probably can't hear me because of the water, but there we go. Now it was 2.5 UVI at the bottom. We've risen about 300 meters. Well, I didn't expect that result. Let's go back up to the top, just there, and uh, try it again, and just see if it's reduced because it was in a valley. There's the backpack. There's the rock. 1.4. So the UVI has actually lowered the higher we've got. But that could actually be for a couple of reasons. One, the summit just there has started to clear. So that means the cloud level has risen. Could that have affected the light penetration through the clouds? Because it's not sunny, it's an overcast day. Could that have an effect? I don't know. We're gonna keep going up and try and find loads of new random things. If you have any comments of what you'd like to test in the nature to help you better care for your reptiles, leave it in the comments. We're gonna keep going up and keep playing. There's Scarf, I'll just say. That's the highest mountain. We're just short of 400 meters above the summit of that, below the summit of that. We've got to go up the path and go around there, but it's a good time to check. This will be a great opportunity to check if the clouds do actually interfere with the UV rays. Again, we'll be able to detect that more when we're actually on the summit in the clouds. But 600 meters up on the grass, let's have a go. 0.8. Now, again, I would assume that's to do with the clouds we'll know more at the top if we have an even lower reading but let's try the rocks upside down there's the sensor nothing a bit higher off a bit higher off up here. no see doesn't do anything but yeah the right way up and we've actually got uvi god that's the same as basically a leopard gecko could live up here quite happily <laughs> that's an eye opener isn't it i suppose this test is basically mute because we can't test whether the UVI is the same down there as to what it is up there unless we have somebody up there and down there at exactly the same time and depressing it at the same time because the weather was different down there an hour ago to what it's going to be up there in an hour. Eh, it's a bit of fun. Take two, check this out. We're in the clouds, like solidly in the clouds. It's absolutely amazing. So what does it say? We're at 800 meters above sea level. 
Oh yeah, so the clouds definitely filter out UV rays. But do we add that naturalism into the reptile's habitat? We don't, do we? Is it good that we um, protect the animals from things like this? Or should we be adding this into their environment, their enrichment? Just like we protect them against natural disasters. So granted, some animals don't see this, but some animals don't see we don't understand some animals, so some animals, instead of brumating, they will go to higher ground to get away from the, like, the rainy season. We don't offer that. But when they go to higher ground, do they see stuff like this? I guess this sort of information can also go for the stuff like arboreal lizards, uh, green tree pythons, mushu, my calyx versicola. They all live up in the trees. So they're gonna get low-lying cloud occasionally, aren't they? Whether it be morning dew or not morning dew. So saying that green tree pythons live up in the trees and they get their UV lighting through the day while they're asleep, are they getting it? Are they getting as much as we think that they're getting just solely because of the cloud cover? Oh, we made it. There's a trick point. We are above the clouds, mainly above the clouds. We've got some view over there. I mean, let's go over. Let's check it out. Look. Just absolutely breathtaking. Whoa. Yeah, so it's mounted in England, Scarf Out Pike. 970 something meters above sea level. Get that on above 0.3. And the question is, what can we actually take away from this? Oh, well, not a lot really, because you think at the bottom of the hill, in overcast cloudy conditions, it was two and a half UVI halfway up the mountain, not even halfway up the mountain, but an hour later, it, a, a whole UVI had dropped off. So it had dropped down to 1.4. Then we get up near the clouds, literally just under the clouds, and there was virtually no UVI. We got into the clouds, there was no UVI. When we were in the clouds, it was three hours later than when we started. So we have to keep the timeline into consideration with this. Like any good curiosity experiment, it's opened up more questions. It's answered some, kind of, but then opened up a lot more. Because, like I said in that in the videos up on the mountains, you can't really check it there, and then three hours later check it there, especially when my start point was three o'clock in the afternoon, and my finish point was six o'clock in the afternoon, evening. Solely because of the drop off of UVI. So the chances are, it was the same all the way up, but because of the time frame, there was a difference there. So that's something else I need to go and check now. That's another question I need to answer. However, one big question that I did have find unanswered and I don't know how to move forward with is there was no UVI in the clouds. The, the sun had not penetrated into the clouds or not as much as what I would have assumed. So how does the UVI get from the sun through the clouds and then down to the ground level at a UVI of 2.5 when I first started at three o'clock? The only way I can answer that, one, I need to go and double check that at an earlier time when the UVI is the highest point, uh, and go into the clouds and check it again. But that's, that's gonna take a while before I can check that. Just to double check the thought process behind this is actually legit. We need to check that before we move forward. But how can the UVI penetrate the clouds and get down to ground level at a UVI of 2.5 when the UV can't penetrate into the clouds? That was my theory. So the only way I, the only sort of slight mentality I've got behind that to help explain that was UVI, the sun had come in through the clouds through a break in the clouds further along the country somewhere. And it had come in and it was bouncing between the clouds and the earth and it was just constantly deflecting like that. However, we did notice there wasn't really a deflection from there, or not really a wavelength that was pick up, that was able to be picked up by a solar meter. It's a whole confusing process trying to learn this sort of stuff through nature. There's loads of scientific papers we can read and stuff like that, but for you to actually experience it yourself just makes your understanding a whole lot better for the animals that you provide. So the likes of the green tree python, will I ever give him clouds? I do give him a fog every now and then. He has got a fog uh, machine in there. So that is something that he does have. So what I can do is turn the fog on and then check the UV inside the fog just to see if there is actually UV there. That's something I could work towards. 
One important thing I did take back from that whole experiment was, let's take a bearded dragon for example. The general care guides that you see kicking around all over the internet and YouTube say they sit in Ferguson Zone 3 or a 12% UV light at 30 centimeters away from their head. But one thing I noticed from my exper experiment out there was there was a lot more places where the UVI was drastically reduced or dropped off completely by the plants, by the rocks underneath this little tiny piece of shade, the slightest bit of shade, boof, the UVA was gone. The UVI was gone, sorry. So do we provide enough escape hidden areas for our bearded dragons. Now, I do. In my enclosure just here, I'll point it out for you while you're there, but uh, do, 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 that back corner, can you see how it's all dark? There's no UVI there. Underneath the uh, canopy that he's got there, there's no UVI there. He's got that log, but the whole stretch underneath that is a reduced UVI. Uh, do, 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 do. Over this back corner, there isn't much of a UVI there either, but there is a place where he can go within this enclosure to get whatever level of UVI he requires with his pinnacle being just here at the high levels of Ferguson Zone 3. So I believe if we can take that knowledge and the knowledge that we've taken from nature and put it all into one big enclosure, we're going to have the happiest, healthiest animal that we're ever going to have. Combine it with enough space to be able to let them move around let them exercise like they would in nature. Let them, if they get a bit spooked, they can run for cover. Get that blood circulating really well. Then we can provide a better, healthier care for our animals. There's loads of ifs, ands or buts, but it basically ends up this video is pretty pointless.